What's up, happy people, and welcome back to Tip Lady Catch and Release. So today is Sunday, and that means it is the verse of the week. So this week, as I was reading the Bible, I came to our verse today. Uh, it comes from Hebrews 4, 7, and I believe that the Holy Spirit gave me something very, very powerful from it today. So I want you to save this verse, save this video, because you might feel fine right now. The devil might not be tempting you right now, or maybe he is. I, I don't know you. At least I don't think I do. I don't know your situation. I don't know who's watching us right now. I don't know what you're going through. But the thing is, God does. God sees you. As I'm speaking, he's giving me the words to speak to you, to minister to you, to touch you, to heal you, to save you, whatever it is that's going on through your life. Because right now, some of you are in a situation where the devil's telling you that you aren't enough to make it through. That you don't have what it takes. That you are no one. And that you have no one. And when he tells you that kind of stuff, throughout all this week and really for the rest of your life, I want you to remember this verse, this video, and the power that the Holy Spirit has over this. So let's get right into it. So like I said, Hebrews 4, 7 says, again, again, he appointed a certain day, today, saying through David, so long afterward, in the words already quoted, today if you hear his voice, do not, do not harden your hearts. Now, I don't know if you see it because I, I read over it when I was reading this past week. Till the Holy Spirit just put up a stop sign. He stopped me in my tracks and when he showed me this and, and it's so anointed now that I see it. I don't know why it took me so long to see it, but it's so anointed and God's been speaking so much through it for me that I'll probably be talking about for the next couple weeks. But for now, focus on that first part of the verse. God created today for a plan and a purpose for your life like we've been talking about for the past couple weeks now so so let's go back and look at it now I think by the time this video uploads uh, seven weeks ago will be when I uploaded the video when we talked about getting up with Elliot because God has a plan and a purpose for your life then four weeks ago we talked about your unlived life being greater than your lived life after that we did a prophetic word with live worship from cameraman Corbs. shout out cameraman Corpse. That was uh, three weeks ago, and then that brings us to last week, the week of, of uh, Halloween, when my mom delivered a great word for y'all, and I know that y'all loved that, when she talks about that weeds and mud, that, that that's going to happen in your life, but when you persevere through it, when you push through it, that there's a greater promise that God has for you, when you stay attached to Jesus. At least that's what I got from it. She talked about a lot of different stuff and it's so annoying to But it. that brings us to today. And I believe that God is saying that today is not a day for you to come and stop watching this video unchanged. But today is the day for you to come into the presence of the Lord, mud and all, hurt and all, brokenness and all, doubts and all, disease and all, sickness and all, pain and all, questions and all, hurt and all, mistakes and all, sin and all. Come on, somebody. That's a, That's what kind of a good God is, even though we're so jacked up. I don't know how he wants us because of all our sin, but he still does. And it's a miracle. I'm telling you all that today. But as I was working on this verse, the Holy Spirit just came over me, and I was just kind of writing down some of my own thoughts, and, I was, I, and as the Spirit was just speaking it to me, and man, it was just cool how He was touching me and speaking to me, and this is just what I wrote down. So I want to read this to you. I wrote down, as the Spirit was speaking to me, He said, You have all fallen short of God's glory. We can barely make it through a day without sinning. And that's why the Father's arms are open to wide. They're open wide. Now, I'm not telling you just to go out and be you. And God's going to forgive you for being sinful and being evil and doing sinful things. But, I think if you're doing that, you've got big problems. But because you're going to fall down, because you're going to fall short of the glory of God, you got to understand, like we talked about with Elliot, that you can't just stay down in your sin. But you have to learn to stand up because God is a promise for us. He has promised us that Jesus is standing there waiting for us with arms open wide. He's waiting to clean up your sin. He's waiting to clean you up and just make you new, to make you whole. That's why he went to the cross. He didn't just go there in vain, but he's waiting. Mm -mm -mm, come on, somebody. 
His blood will wipe away every tear, every act of sin. He's done it before, and he's going to do it again and again and again and again and again. Because that's the kind of God he is. But why is it, even though he's so good, that we want to stay down in our place of pain instead of pursuing the promises of God? Well, I mean, I can answer my own question. It's a whole lot easier to stay down in our pain. Even though I think sometimes we say, well, God help me, we don't really mean it because it's so much easier just to stay down in our pain rather than it would be to get up and to stand up into the promises and the plan and the will to persevere and not to harm, to bring us a hope and a future into our life. Come on. God is calling you out of your sinful ways today. God is calling you past that wall that you put up against him today. Paul said it like this. And man, I love that. The way that Paul says it. Now, there are a lot of ways that Paul says things that make me feel bad of the ways of things I do because he makes life sound so perfect and easy. But I love that he wrote it, this passage like this. He said, still in Hebrews, you can tell I've been reading Hebrews, Hebrews 12, 4, you struggle against sin. Yes, I do, Paul. But you have not yet fought to the point of spilling your blood. Come on. You struggle against your sin. I know that. I know I do. But I know that I haven't fought yet to the point of spilling my blood. And what the Spirit is telling me today is that we're way too passive about the promises of God. Because there's a blessing that God has for you on the other side of that door, of that thought. But you keep letting they tell you that you can't have access for it. You keep walking up trying to open up the door and it's locked. And you're saying, oh well, it's not an open door. But you know what? You just gotta kick down that door. I'm telling you there's a blessing on the other side. Break through a window, bust through a wall, and get that blessing. Get that promise that God has over your life. Come on, somebody. Wouldn't it make sense for you to stop being so doubtful and stop second guessing His sovereignty and stop giving God Almighty excuses and just tear down the wall, just run wild and free in His presence and His love and His mercy and grace that He's given us? Like God said, just He said to me, He said, He said, Oh man, He said, He said, just take off the blindfold that you put around what I've promised you. Take it off around what I'm trying to do for you. Because, yeah, he's God when I got it all together, but he's also God when I don't. He's God when I feel his presence, but he's also God when I don't feel anything, when I don't feel a goosebump at all. He's still got it. He's still God. He's more than able, and he's still worthy. So yeah, I'll praise him when I feel it, but I'll also praise him when I don't. I'll praise him when I feel his presence, and I'll praise him when I do not, because he's no less worthy. He's no less capable. He's no less holy. He's no less God. Come off somebody and give him some praise. <laughs> He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. Jesus. Okay, y'all. I got off track a little bit, but let me go back to what I said a little bit ago, or at least what I think I said. Um, at least this is this is what I wrote down in my notes. I don't know if I actually said it like this, but this is what I this is what I tried to say. I said that. Yeah, we are way too passive about the promises of God. So let's just think about that statement for a sec. First of all, what are the promises of God? Well, I would list them off for y'all, but y'all don't want to be here for a couple days because God has a lot of promises he's promised for us. But as the Holy Spirit was speaking to me this word, here are a few verses that just came to mind right away. So let me read. Jeremiah 29:11. Y'all should know this one. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. Psalms 18.30 God's way is perfect. All the Lord's promises prove true. He is a shield for those who look to Him for protection. Mm, man, that's so good. Second Chronicles 1, 20 and 21. For all of God's promises have been fulfilled in Christ with a resounding yes, hallelujah. And though Christ our amen, which means yes, ascends to God for his glory, it is God who enables us along with you to stand firm in Christ. He has commissioned us to do the work. Uh, 
Galatians 3.22 But the scriptures declare that we are all prisoners of sin, so we all receive God's promise of freedom only by believing in Christ Jesus. Now there's one thing that caught my eye when I read that verse, the flesh mm -hmm. and the spirit. Because you and I were born, we were born separated from God because of sin. We were born into a sinful world. We were born a sinner that began with Adam and Eve in the garden and that has echoed throughout history. All of us are born in the flesh. All of us are born sinners. That's my main point. We're all separated from God because of the flesh. We can't be with them, right? Okay. And the ultimate goal of the flesh is self-pleasure and self-worship. We are living in a culture and in a world that everybody's got a me way of thoughts rather than a God way of thoughts. And I know that that's going to happen, and I know that, that, yeah, we're not going to have God's thoughts because God's thoughts are not our thoughts and God's ways are not our ways. But even because of that, even because of that, I think we still have sinful thoughts, sinful desires, really just because it feels good to do it. Because the world's pleasures are what people worship. It's the hardwiring of humanity. And I can guarantee you that that's what you practiced outside of Jesus every single day of your life. But when you come into a relationship with Jesus, you get a new nature. And that's the ultimate promise being lived out in these verses I'm reading for you today. And it's tension between the two. That's what's created the problem for y'all. That's what you're struggling with right now. At least that's for the person that God wants me to speak to right now. That the tension in between the two, in between the ways, the desires, the thoughts of the world, and the thoughts, and the, de and, the de and, the, and the desires, the will, the plan, the promise that God has for you. There's tension between the two. Right? There's tension between the two. That's what's created the problem for y'all today. Because we were dead in our sins, but we are made alive with Christ. And when you come into a relationship with Christ, the person of God, the Holy Spirit, comes to dwell within you. He says, I'll lead you into all truth. And he said that he'll, he, will, he will take off the veil that covers your eyes. That covers your eyes from understanding the ways of God. You see... Uh, St. Chronicles 4, 3 through 4 really pulled this whole message together for me today. Because it says, And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. So what this means is, if you have not confessed with your mouth that Jesus is King and Lord, believing in God, the Bible clearly says that there's a veil that covers your eyes. It, it covers your understanding. You see, I believe many of you today, now like I said, I, I can't possibly know who's watching right now, but the good thing is God knows. God knows what situation you're in, like I already said earlier. He knows that. Even though I don't know if you're a really strong Christian or not. I don't know if this is the first time you've ever heard anything about God. I don't know. But if that's you, if you really don't have a good understanding about the ways of God, and if you think that me sitting up here, a 13-year-old teenager, is really crazy for doing this, then yeah, you might be right. But you also, I believe, have a veil that's covering your eyes from understanding. So when you look at the things of God, the things of God's people, they will not make sense to you. I probably, what I'm speaking today, do not make a lot of sense to you. It doesn't until you take off that veil of understanding. Now, now I want you to understand what I'm saying the right way. Now, I'm not saying that the second you believe in him, everything's going to change right away. Because this is a crazy thing about faith. Even though you're saved in a moment, you're, you're saved like that. I can make the screen black like that. Can't see me? Whoa, look at that. See, faith can happen in a moment, but you're changed little by little. Like I said, we put up walls against God. And I believe a thought, a wall that we have against God is that many of us, the picture of God that we see is a exasperated father. See? Really? Again? Oh, you're praying me about this again? You lost your temper about that again? Really? I mean, 
really, again, you're asking me to help you with that again? You know, that's kind of how God sounds in my mind when I'm in a bad place, when I haven't been getting into his word, when I haven't been getting into time in his presence, when I've just been letting the, the, the devil get the best of me. Yeah, I'm not perfect. I mean, sometimes I feel like I almost want to go to God about it, but I almost picture him saying, Really? Again? You need me to fill you again? You need me to teach you this again? You need me to walk you through this again? How many times are you going to come to me and ask me to forgive you about this again? But you know, here's the thing I found out. Every time I come to God, it's a compliment to Him. Y'all, this changed my life. It's changing my life. Because when I come to Him and say, Oh, God, I need more grace. He goes, Grace? Yeah, I'm good with grace. And when you ask me for grace, you presume my power in that I'm good at what you ask me to do. Come on, somebody. When I come to God, he's not up there going, Again? Oh, my goodness. I gotta show you again how to do this. I gotta show you again how to work through this. I've been teaching you since you were five years old. What are you, stupid? Y'all, it's not the language of heaven. God goes, Again. Again, you hear the difference? He's going, yeah, Cameron Elliot, yeah, I got you again. Yeah, I know you just beat up your brothers, but I got you. Yeah, whoever's watching, yeah, I got you. Yeah, I can, I got you, I can do it again. That's what God's up there saying. And I hear him saying right now, are you willing to let me come in, God speaking? Are you willing to let me come in and do it again for you? To let me come in and change the way you think about things again? Y'all, I want to get to the point in my life where I don't box God in to the thoughts I have about Him or what He can or cannot do or that He just has to do it this one way or that we have to do church or these videos that just this one way and all these other concepts and thoughts that we box God into. I mean, there's a lot of different ways to box Him into things, but I mean, I know y'all are smart. Y'all get the concept, right? There's always going to be these concepts that we think that this is how it has to be, how it has to happen. Now, obviously, if it's in the Word of God, that does have to happen. It does. But for those spots that we just have to leave our mind and our imagination and our thoughts and our faith, live it out, I believe that there are boxes that we've all put around God. No matter where you're at in life today, you will have your own boxes in some way, shape, or form. But God called me to tell you today. It's time to break out of the boxes, happy people. It is. You don't, I don't know, but I don't, if I were you, I don't just want to be stuck here when there's so much more. There's so much more. Like we talked about, uh, like I said, three weeks ago, there's another site that you're not seeing with. There's so much more. One box is that I think I have to do things one way. But God told me to do this, so I'm going to do it. So right now, even though it might seem weird watching a YouTube video, with your eyes closed, I want to ask the Holy Spirit, God, where have I put a box around you? And guys, open up your hearts, open up your minds to really let God work in you right now. God, where have I put a box around you? Because we all have different boxes, different boundaries that we put up against God. Y'all, you've done all these things, and I don't need to know about them. Just you and Jesus. But I want to pray real quick over y'all. So, dear Lord Jesus. Oh, and y'all, if you want to repeat after me, that's fine. I'll, I mean, yeah, yeah, repeat after me. If it's from your heart, repeat after me. Dear Lord Jesus, I repent from imitating the ideas of this world. And I repent for worrying about the opinions of culture of church, of really anything that has limited me from you, oh God. So today, Jesus, because you created today for a plan and a purpose, Jesus, Holy Spirit, transform my mind. God, transform my soul. Transform my, my mind, soul, will, emotions, God. God, transform all of me. So any boxes, Father, God, break them down. Break them down at your feet, God. So God, today we can see you fully, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, 
Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for doing that again for us. Come on, somebody, and give him some praise this morning. So, thank you for watching Tip Lady Catch and Release. I don't know what y'all thought of this kind of video, but I love it. Holy Spirit just speaking, doing His will, what He wants to do. Nothing better. So, make sure to tune in next week for another verse of the week. Take care, God bless. And go live out what God's calling you to live this week. Take care, God bless, and we are gone. What's up, all? Say! I'm sorry. Say!